In the heart of Putnam Valley lies Lake Oscawana, an area rich in history as popular resort and favored getaway for summer vacationers of yesteryear. In the early 20th century, it was described as offering miles of bridle paths passing through picturesque sections that present an ever-changing panorama of beauty, as wild as the Adirondacks and almost at the door of the metropolis. Earliest records show it referred to as Long Pond, but following the American Revolution, it was known as Horton's Pond, named after John Horton, who had purchased the lake and surrounding land. By 1829, the lake was named Red Fire Pond, and then by 1854, it was named Canopus Lake. However, by 1876, it became known as Oscawana, a name that has stood the test of time. Native Americans were the primary occupants of the Hudson Highlands region until the early 1700s. Also known as the Nakpeams, they were situated in Canopus Hollow, where the land was fertile and crops were plentiful. Their principal village appears to have been called Canopus from the name of the Sachem. Many Native Americans considered this area of Putnam Valley their home. There are several possibilities for how the lake ultimately got the name Oscawana. One theory is that it was named after a Native American signer of a deed dated 1682 in Croton, named Osquanes. Another Native American name, Oscawana, sold a tract of land along the Hudson River to the Van Cortland family in 1863. Yet another theory is, Oscawana means seven echoes to the Native Americans. It is said that at one spot on the northwest side of the lake near Goose Rocks, a shout, even a short sentence, came back to you loud and clear seven times. The resort industry in Putnam Valley began about 1856 when Abijah Lee purchased land on the southwestern side of the lake and opened the lake house, which became the first summer resort in the area. It was later renamed the Lake Oscawana House and by the turn of the century, the Oscawana House. During the busy summer months, fairs would be held here, including field sports and aquatic contests. Bands played, dinners and suppers were served under tents, while dramatic and musical entertainment was held in the ballroom. Another early resort on the lake was the Dunderberg Club, founded in 1882 by a group of hunter and sportsmen from Peekskill. The club membership purchased Wheat Island and built the Dunderberg Lodge. It had been designed for rod and gun sport, but became a favorite summer spot for vacationers, and the name was changed to the Dunderberg Hotel. Soon, more hotels and boarding houses began popping up, and Lake Oscawana became one of Putnam County's greatest destinations for summertime fun. Around 1911, the Dunderberg was bought and expanded by brothers Harry and Clement Gorley. It is said that they had originally intended to run Dunderberg as a temperance hotel, but it became known as the premier hotel on the lake. The brothers ran the popular getaway for several decades and sold it in the late 1930s, but Harry remained on the property as the off-season caretaker. Harry Gorley was one of the best-known residents of the lake and the town of Putnam Valley. He was a local judge, and as well as a businessman, and is credited with publishing many of the early picture postcards of Lake Oscawana. In November of 1939, national headlines read the most ghastly murder in Putnam's history. On Thanksgiving morning, Clement Gorley found his brother Harry's brutally beaten and lifeless body inside a shed located at the back of the hotel. The suspect? Joseph Sheehan, the hotel's seasonal bartender. Sheehan was then on the lam for seven months following his botched robbery attempt, and authorities posted all points bulletins across the United States. Eventually, Sheehan was caught trying to escape into Canada, and he confessed to killing Harry. 
he was returned to Putnam County, tried, and was found guilty of second-degree murder. He received a sentence of 30 years to life. By the early 1940s, the Dunderberg was rebuilt and reopened as Coleman's Landing, featuring a hotel and restaurant. It had a lively bar and rented out paddle boats. The owner, Pierre Pop Coleman, who had originally visited the lake as a camper at the French Y next door, had a radio program on WLNA in New York City about animals and was well known around the lake. Pop would broadcast live from the landing with musics by the likes of Al Link Orchestra. Guests from all around the lake would come and dance the night away. Unfortunately, as was the fate of most of the hotels, Coleman's Landing, formerly the Dunderberg, burned down in January 1951. In the late 1800s, William Lawson, a pharmacist from Peekskill, bought land on the south shore of the lake and built cottages with lake rights and called his community Noswell Park, which was his last name, Lawson, spelled backwards. The Rocky Rest, also known as the Tompkins House, was located high in the hills behind Noswell Park off Dunderberg Road. It was literally built on a rock, but was lost in a fire about 1917. Abley's Park was across the cove from Dunderberg and long considered the primary social center of the lake. It originally included two hotels, the Abley House, built in the 1800s, and the Putnam House. Charles Abley was a prominent Peekskill business owner and lawyer who owned the hotels and bottled soda pop, among other business ventures. It is said, although a successful businessman, His rather lax management of the hotels occasionally resulted in guests leaving the premises without paying their hotel bills. Abley Park also included Abley's Rustic Casino, a pavilion-style building used for dances and parties and had a miniature golf course. The road leading to the hotel's picnic grounds was referred to as Lover's Lane for the idyllic stroll to the grounds. Two bars, the Brown Cow Casino, a dance hall, and the Old Shebang, a speakeasy, were popular for nightlife and attracted many soldiers training at nearby Camp Smith during World War II. Longtime residents recall some very rowdy Saturday nights in the 1940s and throughout its many years. Summer vacationers would row across the lake just to be a part of the fun. Barney Edelman ran Edelman's General Store, which was located right on the beach. Barney sold ice cream, sundries, cigarettes, and gasoline, and was one of the largest publishers of postcards of the lake. He had a big personality and was well-known by residents and summer vacationers alike. He would often be heard yelling at kids to not trip all over his floor as they ran out of the lake and ran into his store for ice cream. In 1922, F.K. James loaned money to Robert Shepard Sr. to build Hilltop Lodge. It operated for only a few short years before it burned down in September 1926. Shepard rebuilt Hilltop within a year as a tea room and a dining area along with a dry goods store. The 15-room hotel was added in 1928 with a large stone fireplace in the lobby, a big kitchen, and a main floor dining room overlooking the lake. A tennis court and six cottages were added to the property, which could be rented for $150 to $200 per summer. The front desk rented boats and canoes and sold Lake Oscawana postcards to hotel guests. In the early 1900s, Otter Island was owned by Henry W. Lane, one of the original founders of the Dunderberg Club. The bridge between the island and the mainland has been a popular image for the lake shown on several postcards. The farm animals seen in this postcard lived in a barn on the island. During the early 1900s, the wooden bridge connecting Otter, White Birch Island to the shore was known as Lane's Point. In 1963, a Coca-Cola commercial was filmed on Otter Island featuring American actress Carol Lindley, 
best known for her roles in 1952's Blue Denim and The Poseidon Adventure in 1972. Lost River, also known as St. John's River, is the largest wetlands area and a critical inlet stream to Lake Oscawana. Popular for its pristine, picturesque beauty, many vacationers would venture out in canoes to enjoy this tranquil oasis. Other than resorts, ice was the only major industry on the lake. The ice house on the lake was used to store ice for the Oscawana Lake House and for sale to summer visitors. Winter ice was cut on the lake using cross-cut saws and hauled by horse-drawn wagons to the Peekskill train station for transport to New York City. There was also a grist mill near Abley Cove on the eastern side. In 1886, William S. Pelletro wrote in his History of Putnam County, the picturesque beauty of this lake is widely known and nothing but its comparative inaccessibility prevents it from being a very popular resort. Peekskill was Putnam Valley's primary source of contact with the outside world for many years. Early tourists who arrived at the Peekskill Railroad Station or boat dock were met by a passenger stage line which ran up Osquana Lake Road. These stages were mule carts and were operated by Absalom Sherwood. What would take 20 minutes to drive today would take three hours by mule cart, and passengers had little choice but to enjoy the scenery as the mules slowly made their way to the lake. When electric trolley service began in Peekskill in 1890, Sherwood gave up his mule-drawn taxi service, taking visitors only who were going to Oscawana and Mohegan Lake in northern Westchester County. In 1921, he purchased an automobile and used it as a taxi for the same purpose. The invention of automobiles and Putnam Valley's proximity to New York City provided the perfect escape for city dwellers to travel the hour or so to enjoy the trendy vacation in the country of the early 20th century. Lake Oscawana was home to two YMCA camps. Camp Oscawana was a French YMCA, YMCA camp operated from the early 1900s through the 1930s near White Birch, now known as Otter Island. It attracted boys from affluent French-speaking families throughout the New York City area. Campers would hear both Reveille and the Marseillais every day in the summer, and both the American and French flags would be raised in the morning. The camp offered a wide variety of activities, including handball, canoeing, boat racing, rowing, diving with a diving tower, and swimming lessons, as well as all Red Cross classes. Frequent swimming competitions were held with campers from the other popular YMCA camp, Camp Ruddy, located at the north end of the lake. Ray Ruddy, a Navy captain in World War I and an Olympic swimmer, opened and operated Camp Ruddy from 1918 till the early 1940s. Camp Ruddy served as a training site for five-time gold medalist Johnny Weissmuller as he prepared for the 1924 and 1928 Olympics, as well as his role as the original Tarzan in motion pictures. Camp Ruddy was a boys' camp that offered a full range of camping activities and had a reputation as a fun but demanding place. There have been several high-profile celebrities that have enjoyed the serene country living that is Oscawana. Most notably was baseball legend Babe Ruth. Ruth would visit his manager, Walter Christie Walsh, who owned a cottage on Hemlock Point on the eastern shore of the lake. Walsh was a sports writer and president of Christie Walsh Syndicate and long considered the first baseball sports agent. His cottage became like a second home for Ruth. There are many memories of Ruth playing ball with the locals at the community ball field and participating in hitting exhibitions. Babe Ruth, seen in action, plays four-inning game, autograph ball, bat and glove, is a headline from the August 27, 1926 Putnam County Courier, highlighting the excitement of a Babe Ruth weekend visit to Oscawana. Ruth provided autograph memorabilia, which was auctioned off at a fundraiser at Abley Casino. 
His appearances always drew large crowds as everyone wanted to get a glimpse of the King of Swat. It is believed that Walsh hoped to shield Ruth from the public eye and give him privacy to be himself as his retreat was accessible only by boat. Lou Gehrig and Ty Cobb had also spent time at Lake Oscawana with Walsh. Garrick paid a visit to Oscawana in August of 1927, and according to the Putnam County Courier, took part in a baseball game with boys from the camps. He was also famously photographed fishing on goose rocks and put on in his own hitting exhibition for locals at Camp Ruddy. According to a 2016 Yankees Magazine article written by Rick Cerrone, while traveling by train to Boston in 1925, the Detroit Tigers took a detour at the Peekskill train station for a quick trip to the lake. Ty Cobb signed a bat for Oscawana resident Al Johnson, inscribed with Ty Cobb, Lake Oscawana, August 9, 1925. It is unknown the exact details of what transpired or the reason that Cobb gifted the bat to Mr. Johnson, but he must have left a great impression on Cobb to receive such a prestigious gift. That gift stayed with the Johnson family for almost 85 years, rarely handled, and until 2010, never offered for public sale. Johnson's grandson sold the bat at auction for more than $113,000. This was the highest amount paid for a Ty Cobb signed bat, according to Mears Auctions. A notable residence was Camp Idlewild, later the home of Jaws movie actor Roy Scheider and located right next door to the former Christy Walsh house. The home had a unique wooden porch railing, and Scheider would chat with the boaters as they passed by his property. The property was sometimes bustling with film crews and can be seen in the 2003 film Mona Lisa Smile with Julia Roberts. The property also served as the backdrop of a lakeside home in an episode during the final season of HBO's The Sopranos titled Sopranos Home Movies. Today, Lake Oscawana does not have the bustling summer vacationers and resort life on its shores that it once had, but rather year-round residents who love the lake for the same reasons that the summer vacationers did, a peaceful oasis where they enjoy country living. The Lake Oscawana Civic Association and the Lake Oscawana Advisory Committee serve as stewards for the lake to protect its health and safety for the many years to come.